Hello, this is Dr. Reginald Garman at Word of Faith Love Center. I pray that this message that you are about to hear will renew your mind, bless your soul, and inspire your spirit to love God through your living and to live God through your loving. I pray that you will share this message with someone else and be a blessing. And I hope to see you real soon at a live service right here at Word of Faith Love Center. That's a little appetizer. Here in Luke chapter 9, verse number 1, it says, Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority. What did he give them? Power and authority. Now, if God gives you something, he expects you to use it, right? If God gives you anything, he expects you to use it. The worst thing you want to do is give somebody a gift that they don't use. If I'm going to give you something, I want to give you something you can use. So he gave them power and authority. Why? Because he knew they would need power and authority whenever he would send them out. Wherever God is sending you, you're going to need power and authority. Why would you need power and authority? I'm glad you asked. Because you got to endure demons. Over all demons and to cure diseases, there are things that are wrong that you're going to have to cure. Verse number two, and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said to them, take nothing for the journey, neither staff, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, and do not have two tunics apiece. Whatever house you enter, stay there and from there depart. And whoever will not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now, here in our text, we see Jesus, who is calling his 12 disciples, some called the 12 apostles, and he called them, and he equipped them, and he sent them out. He called, he equipped, and he sent. So I want you to know that everybody in here, you have a calling. You don't have to be a pastor, an evangelist, apostle, a, a teacher, or a prophet, but you have a calling. Sometimes your calling is as a mother, as a father, as a husband, as a wife, as a teacher, as a doctor, as an engineer. Whatever your calling is, God called you to do that. God created you to do that, and God equipped you to do it, and he sent you out to do whatever he's called you to do. So we all have a calling, and God is sending us out. He's sending us out. We are his ambassadors. We are the ones that are equipped to do what he has called us to do. Now, whenever God equips you to do something, know this, you cannot fail. You cannot fail when God equips you to do something. When God gives you the power and authority to go and cast out demons, guess what? You're going to cast out demons. If God gives you the power and authority to cure diseases, guess what? You're going to cure diseases. If God gives you the power and authority to solve problems on your job, guess what? You will be successful. No matter what God calls you to do, he is not calling us to fail. God did not make failures, but what God made and what God put in us, it has equipped us to be successful. So there are things that I wanted to cover with you as far as things that you should know when God sends you, when God sends you. So these are things that we talked about already, that it is not your will, but God's will, number one. It's not your will. This is God's will for your life. God is not sending you to do something you want to do. He's sending you to do something he wants you to do. We live our life for him. We have been bought with a prize. So it is God's will, not our will. Number two, he will not send you alone. God will never send you alone. God will send you with some help. We need help, amen? He's a very present help in our time of trouble. Number three, you have the power and authority to do what God wants. I want you to know God has given you power and he's given you authority. We talked about that. We talked about there will be demonic opposition. There will be demonic opposition. Don't worry about it. Whenever God calls you to do something, no matter what it is, there will be demonic opposition. 
Number six, you must trust. No, number five, you must do what he instructed you to do. You must do what he instructed you to do. Jesus told them to go and preach the gospel. That's what they did. They went and preached and they healed. You must do what he instructed you to do. Not what he instructed somebody else to do. Stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. You do what God has called you to do. Because at the end of the day, God is only going to hold you responsible for what he called you to do. Not what other people expected you to do. See, a lot of times we find ourselves trying to please people, but you got to please God. God is only going to hold you accountable for what he called you to do. Not what other people, because other people will run you ragged. Other people will have you doing so many different things. And you can be co so concerned about what other people are doing, you forget about what you're supposed to do. So you must do what he instructed you to do. Number six, Jesus told them, listen, don't take no money, don't take no staff, don't take no bag, don't take no bread. Why did he tell them that? Why did he tell them that? Because number six, you must trust him. You must trust him. When God tells you not to take anything, you got to trust him. When God tells you to go and you feel like you don't have enough to go with, God said, trust me. Trust me. When God tells you to do something and you don't know all the answers, you must trust him. How many of us had to trust God when we didn't have everything that we thought we needed in order to do what God called us to do? We had to trust God. See, people don't understand how much of your walk is a faith walk. Yeah. They don't understand why you have to stay before the presence of God. Yeah. They don't understand that you don't even eat the next day unless God speaks to you and tells you what you need to do. They don't understand how every day you wake up, you got to depend on him talking to you and instructing you and helping you. He don't, people don't understand that if it wasn't for God, it would be a struggle just to get out of the bed in the morning. People don't understand every day I have learned how to trust in the Lord. I have learned how to know that God is never going to leave me. God is going to provide for me. Everybody say that he's my daily bread. But when you got to trust him every day of your life, you really understand he truly is your daily bread. That's why when God fed the children of Israel in the wilderness and he rained down manna from heaven, he only gave them enough for that day. He did not give them enough for the week, for the month. He only gave them enough for the day because this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to trust the Lord today. I can't worry about tomorrow. I just got to trust him. Today, if I can make it through the day, tomorrow will take care of itself. Stop worrying about what you're going to do next week. Just do what God called you to do today. If he provided for you today, he'll provide for you tomorrow. If he made a way today, he's going to make a way tomorrow. If he kept you in your right mind today. Why? Because he the same today, tomorrow, and forevermore. He's still a healer today. He will be a healer tomorrow. He's a provider today. Guess what? He will be a provider tomorrow. He's a way maker today. He will be a way maker tomorrow. God said, trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. Come on. Pass on to understand how I'm going to make it next week. Don't worry about next week. Just make it today. Just make it today. God, take one day at a time. You got to learn. That's why Jesus said, don't take all that stuff with you. Isn't it amazing God to say, don't take all that stuff with you, but yet he's a God of preparation? 
There are some assignments, not every assignment, there are some assignments God is not going to give you everything in the beginning. There are some assignments you're going to have to learn as you go. As you go, God will start adding things to you. See, you want everything in the beginning so you can feel comfortable. Say, oh, yeah, I see how I'm going to do this. Lord, I see how I'm going to pay my bills next week. I see how you working it out next month. And God said, "Uh uh-uh, that's not that kind of trip. This trip right here, you're going to have to trust me every day. You got to trust me every day that God is going to send the customers that you need for your business. See, you want them to be lined up at the door around the corner. And God said, no, I just want you to go open up and trust that I'm going to bring somebody to your establishment today. Somebody's going to call you today. I don't know about you. I feel God. I I feel God's getting ready to open up somebody's businesses today. I I feel some of y'all been wondering, Lord, how are we going to make it? Lord, but I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, God is going to speak to the east and to the west and the north and the south and the resources that you're going to need is going to start calling you on the phone. Sending you an email, going to your website. And you're wondering, how did you hear about me? Somebody told somebody that told somebody that told somebody. Just do what God called you to do. Say, trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Whatever God called you to do, trust him. Look at this. Look at verse number four. Verse number four. I got to finish today. Verse number four. It says, whatever house you enter, what? Stay there. And from there depart. And whoever will not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet as a testimony against them. Now, number seven, number seven, here it is. When God sends you, you cannot get discouraged by the lack of results. Listen to me. We're going to help somebody. You can't get discouraged by the lack of results or rejection. Say rejection. One of the tests, one of the tests of greatness, one of the tests of greatness is your ability to survive rejection. I would say that you will never become great in life until you learn how to survive rejection. You would never do anything of importance unless you know how to press beyond the no's of life. Because there will be plenty of times people will tell you no. There will be plenty of times people will reject you. There will be plenty of times people say, I don't want to have nothing to do with you. But that does not mean you still cannot become great. You will always have to deal with rejection in your life on the path to greatness. There will always be times you got to shake the dust off your feet and keep it moving. That's basically what Jesus told the disciples. He said, listen, you got the gospel. I'm calling you to do this. I'm giving you power and authority. You got me with you every step of the way. You got the Holy Spirit with you. But even after all of that, there will still be people that don't want to have anything to do with you. And what did he say to him? He didn't say have a pity party. Oh, my God, they left. uh, Lord, they didn't buy my product. Oh, my God, they didn't say yes. What did Jesus say? Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Shake the dust off and and keep, keep it moving. Because if you can't survive rejection, then rejection will destroy you. You will start, listen, you will start doubting your own calling. You will start doubting your own gift. 
you, you have all this power and all this authority, but because somebody said no to you, you'd be like, oh, why, why did... Listen, when you know you are sent, rejection is not an election. We got to stop making rejection an election. Because rejection is not an election because you're not the one that elected me in the beginning. That's why you got to know who you are and whose you are before you are sent. Because when you know who you are and whose you are and you encounter people that don't want no parts of you, you will understand I'm still who God called me to be. I don't need your approval for my election because I was already elected before I even came into your presence. Yes, sir. You just don't like this flavor. But strawberry is still good. You just don't like this flavor, but vanilla is still in style. Light skin coming back, baby. <laughs> Preach like skin. I've seen so many people destroyed because of rejection. So many. I, I remember even as a little boy, I was scared to ask somebody to dance because I couldn't deal with rejection. So I'm, I'm going to the party, right? I had to be real sure that she was going to say yes before I even walked across. That's a long walk. Walking across the room to ask somebody to dance, and they say no. And you got to walk all the way back across the room. <laughs> Young people don't know nothing about that. They go to parties now. They just stand on the wall. I asked my son. I said, what you do? He said, oh, I just stood there. <laughs> but I would, I would really have to make sure. I'd be looking at them. And they'd be, this is what I hate. I hate when they'd be over there and be like dancing by themselves. And they'd look like they want to dance. Then you walk over there, you want to dance? No. I was like, what you dancing for? <laughs> Stop moving because you're sending some wrong signals. <laughs> but I, I used to have a real hard time dealing with rejection. So I would just not ask. You have not because you're asked not. Ask and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door, your door, that's meant for you. Listen to me. The door that is meant to open for you will be open. Listen, God has given you keys. Keys to the kingdom. Keys to the kingdom means that when you go to the door that's meant for you, it's going to open because you got the key to it. What y'all trying to do is jimmy the lock and open up doors that God never intended for you to open. If a door doesn't open for you, just walk away, shake the dust off your feet and say to yourself, that door was not meant for me to go through. Take your key. Your key still works. It just doesn't work on that door. So you go to the next door and open that, and God will open up things for your life. Don't get discouraged. Those that are in between jobs, don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged because when somebody says no, God has already spoken to somebody to say yes. And some of you all are in transition right now. You're in transition right now. You're in transition because of a job, because of a relationship, or because of life itself. And I want you to know that that transition is ordained by God. And I need you to stop crying over what you lost. And I need you to start praising God of what he's getting ready to bring in your life. Because some of y'all not crying over spilled milk, you're crying over spoiled milk. And spoiled milk needs to be what? Y'all better preach this oh morning. Why are you crying over spoiled milk? Goodness. It has out 
outdated you. And some things that has outdated you, you need to throw that thing. I, who am I talking to here today? It's full. And sometimes you got to smell it a little bit. And I don't know that you want that milk so bad, but you got to get rid of it. Stop crying over spoiled milk. When God said, this thing has expired. When something has expired in your life, it can be a job, it can be a relationship. Let it go. Let it go. I hear you. Gotta get over being discouraged just because something's spoiled in your life. When something's spoiled, it's time to get rid of it. Check the expiration date. God already knew the expiration date. You're the one trying to prolong it. Oh, my God. I remember I was so hungry one day. I went in the refrigerator. I wanted something so bad. And my wife told me, check the expiration date. That's been in there a while. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> you know what my wife told me? She said, okay, you get sick if you want to. <laughs> now, when she started talking about me getting sick, I said, okay, I throw it away. I got a choice, either be hungry or be sick. Which one you choose to be? First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Look at this. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. You can't get discouraged over the lack of results. Why? Because Paul said this. I planted Apollo's water, but what? But who? God gave the increase. See, all you need to do is plant and water and leave the increase up to God. You plant, you water, but who brings the increase? So when something is not moving as fast as you think it should move, just wait on God to bring the increase. God will blow that thing up in no time. God will increase it. God will bring so much abundance in your life because some of y'all have planted and you've watered, but now you got to wait on God to bring the increase. So don't get discouraged because of lack of results. Because when you keep doing what God has called you to do, results will come. You keep sowing your seed, you keep working hard, God will bring the increase. Number eight. Look at Luke chapter 9, verse 10. Luke chapter 9, verse 10. Look at Luke chapter 9, verse 10. What happened? It says, and the apostles, when they had returned, told him all they had done. Then he took them and went aside privately in a deserted place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. So the disciples, they went out, they preached the gospel, they healed the sick. And then they came back to Jesus. And when they came back to Jesus, the Bible says they returned and told him all they had done. Now, when God sends you, you must give an account of what you have done. That's right. You must give an account. So don't thank God. Listen, don't think God is going to send you to do something you never have to answer back to him. That's right. So the question is this. How are you dealing with your assignment? What account will you give God if he was to show up today and ask you, did you do what I called you to do? Because there will be a day, just like the disciples, that you're going to have to give an account of what you did. So all those gifts and talents you have, that you did not use, and God shows up in your life said, okay, give me an account. What did you do today? That's right. What did you do today? What did you do with what I gave you? That's right. I don't say this to make you feel bad. I hope I'm saying this to inspire you to get busy. That's right. Because you will, listen to me, you will have to give an account of what you've done and what you haven't done. Amen. And when that day come, I want him to say to you, well done. Yeah. That's right. Thou good yeah. and faithful servant. Well done. 
thou good and faithful servant. So when God sends you, just know this. You will have to give an account. I don't have to answer to nobody. Yes, you do. That's right. Yes, you do. You got to give an account. When you work for somebody, they have every right to ask you, what have you done today? They have every right to ask you, what have you done this week? Just like you got every right to ask them, where's my check? Amen? Amen? You must give an account. But look at what they did. Go back to verse number 10. Verse number 10. Look at what they did. Verse number 10. And the apostles, when they had returned, told him all they had done. Then he, who is he? Jesus. Then Jesus took them and went aside privately in a deserted place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. So here the disciples were. They were out there doing what God has called them to do. They came back to Jesus, told Jesus everything. Jesus, we healed the sick. We cast out demons. And what did Jesus do? Jesus said, come on, I need to pull you aside. Because whenever God sends you, you must take time to be restored. You got to take time to be restored. Whatever God is sending you to do, you got to take time to be restored. Whenever God is sending you to be a mother or father, you got to take time to be restored. You got to take time to yourself. You got to get away. I know you love your kids, but you got to get away from your kids sometimes. And all the parents said, Amen. Amen. I went out of town. They said, You taking the kids? I was like, Whoop. No. No kids on this trip. Because you got to take time to be restored. As a pastor, I got to take time to be restored. After you minister to others, you must be ministered to by God. You must replenish your ministry as a mother, as a father, as a student, as a pastor, as an entrepreneur, as a teacher. It must be followed by rest. God worked six days, but the seventh day he what? He rested. It's important you take a day of rest. It was never ordained for us to work seven days a week. You need a Sabbath day. You need a day of rest, a day of rest, a day of rest, and a day of worship. You need a day of rest and a day of worship. You need a day of rest and a day of worship. That's why today is our day of worship. And we should get some rest today. No work today. Rest. You've been working six days. Rest. Tell somebody, I'm not doing anything today. I'm resting. You got to be restored. Because why? Because come Monday, God is going to send you back out. Got to have a day of rest. I like something that Tom Rayner did. He said, these are the top five reasons why pastors quit. Top five reasons why pastors quit. Number one, burnout. Number one reason, burnout. Number two, family problems. Number three, financial struggles. Number four, failure to meet their own unreasonable expectations. And number five, a lack of coaching, mentoring, and encouragement. And you may ask, Pastor, why are you sharing this with us? We're not a pastor. You know what? I bet you you can see yourself in one of these. Even though you're not a pastor, whatever God is sending you to do, I guarantee you one of these reasons will make you quit. Burnout, family problems, financial struggles, failure to meet your own unreasonable expectations, and a lack of coaching. Lack of coaching. So here were the disciples, and then I'm done. After the disciples came back and reported, and after they gave an account of what they did and the people they helped and ministered to, Jesus pulled them aside and said, listen, you got to rest. You got to get some rest. And after he pulled them aside, here come the multitudes following Every time you try to get some rest, there's always somebody trying to mess you up. So the multitudes came. 
And the disciples, they did what any other person would have done when you're trying to rest. And you see all these thrones. The Bible says it was 5,000. 5,000 men, not counting women and children. And they see the 5,000 and they following Jesus and the apostles. And the apostle went to Jesus and said what anybody would say when they need some rest. He said, send them away. Jesus turned back. He said, no, you feed them. He said, you want us to do what? He said, yeah, feed them. Like, Jesus, we don't have enough to feed 5,000. There's a little boy over there with two fish and five loaves of bread. Took the bread, multiplied it, fed 5,000. And then the Bible says that after they fed the 5,000, verse number 17, look at verse 17, Luke chapter 9, verse 17. After they fed, so they all ate and were filled. And 12 baskets of leftover fragments were taken up by them. You know, Thanksgiving is good, right? We all eat good on Thanksgiving. But you know what's really good? That Friday. That Friday when you got leftover mac and cheese and leftover honey baked ham and leftover turkey. It's, it's nothing like Friday's dinner, right? So here were the disciples that were sent out. But after they fed the 5,000, they had 12 baskets left over. And I want you to know this, because when God sends you, last thing I want to share with you. Whenever God sends you, number 10, there is an overflow reserved for you. There is an overflow reserved for you. God will call you, he will equip you, and then he'll send you out to do whatever he's called you to do. But the good news is this. After you've done all that, there is an overflow with your name on it. There were 12 baskets. There were 12 disciples. Everybody had their own basket. Everybody had their own overflow. And I want to talk to somebody in here today. Because you've been that one that's just been given and given and helping and helping. People call you and call you and pull on you and pull on you. And you feel like the disciples sometimes say, Lord, send them away. And Jesus said, no, you feed them. And then you got to feed them again and help them again and give them again and answer the phone again and counsel them again and pick them up again and take them somewhere again. You're always the one they call. You're always the one they reach out to. And some of y'all, you just been ministering and just been ministering and just been ministering. And God is saying, I have not forgotten your labor of love. But after you have fed the 5,000, the 10,000, however many times you've done it, I got something reserved just with your name on it. That you don't have to share with nobody. Amen. That this basket right here is just for you. It's got your name on it. I got 12 baskets. John, you ain't got to share with Peter. Peter, you don't have to give John none. This is just for you. Amen. This is the one time you can be selfish and take your basket. And say, I need this just for me. This is just for me. I'm taking a vacation just for me. 
I'm going away just for me. I'm getting in a quiet place just for me. I don't want nobody to bother me. I ain't answering no phone. This just for me. There's an overflow that's got your name on it. And you got one time to take your basket and say, Lord, you mean I don't got to feed nobody? Lord, you mean I don't have to pick up nobody? Lord, you... you." Enjoy it while it lasts. Because when it's over, he's going to send you back out. But you get that one moment. Amen? Come on now. If you had that one moment, say, listen, I'm taking a day just for me. I ain't cooking for nobody. I ain't helping nobody. Anybody ever been there? You be like, I ain't counseling nobody. I ain't praying for nobody. I know y'all haven't been there, but pastor's been there. I've been to a place where I say, you know what? I need a me day. And sometimes you feel bad because you got to take a me day. But that's your overflow because you have sown, you have given, you have just helped everybody. And now today God said, today is for you. You go to the spa, you go get your nails done. I don't want you to worry about nothing. Today is your day. And I don't want you to feel guilty about it. God sent me here today to say, don't feel guilty taking your basket with your name on it. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Can we give God praise in the house today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of y'all have given till you can't give no more. But I want you to know there's an overflow of blessing that is coming back in your life. There's an overflow. I'll never forget one of my members gave me something. They said, Pastor, this is for you. And I knew what they was talking about because when you're a giver, whenever somebody gives you something, you want to give it away. And that member looked at me and said, this is for you, Pastor. Don't you give it away. And I saw the conviction in her eyes. I said, yes, ma'am. Yes, mother. Yes, mother. She said, this is for you. There's something that you just got. Listen, people of God, there's times that you got to take care of you sometimes. There's somebody in there today, you just tired. You're tired because you allow everybody to pull on you. Where are you? Stand to your feet. I want to pray for you before we leave today. Stand to your feet. You're tired. Everybody just pulling on you, pulling on you, pulling on you. You're like, Lord, I just need a day. I just, have you ever said, I just need a day when nobody calls me? I just need a day. You're tired. Everything is on you feel like you're feeding 5,000. God sent me here today to let you know I'm getting ready to bring an overflow in your life that's just for you. Mama, Daddy, I know that's your calling. I know you got to be Mama and you got to be Daddy. But that is a day that sometimes you just got to take out for yourself. Ministers, you minister to everybody. You pour into everybody. When are you going to let somebody pour into you? You're going to burn out. And when you burn out, you're not going to be any good to anybody. And I'm here to tell you today, I want you to take a day this week just for you. Just for you. Don't answer no email. Don't answer no text. Don't answer your phone. I want you to take a day 
just for you. Husbands, ask your wife to keep the kids. Wives, ask your husband to keep the kids and take a day just for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, the weight of ministry is heavy. But God, this is what you called us to do. And I pray that you will bring God balance. 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 In the life of your people. And that you will bring an overflow of blessings. That after they have ministered to others, that God, you got something reserved just for them. That will bless them, that will restore them, that will give them the strength that they need to continue the journey that's before them. Lord, I thank you for supernatural overflow you bring into the life of your people and Lord right now we give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise in Jesus name amen clap your hands and thank God hallelujah